Hello everyone. Welcome to the lecture series on renewable energy engineering. I am Nidhi Tripathi, assistant professor in mechanical engineering department at LJ Institute of Engineering and Technology. So let us carry on our chapter wind energy. This is our second lecture based on the wind energy. In this session we will study about the wind turbine, how electricity is generated, what are the terminology used in the wind power generation and wind energy conversion. Now, so uh, let us start with what is inside the wind turbine as you see in this diagram. We generally by seeing the turbine we can easily understand uh, that it is very, it is having a very simple design. Okay, and we can generate the electricity by more simplifying the design. But the standard design and uh, uh, method creates the difference. Now, the basic component of wind turbine are rotor, main shaft, generator, anemometer, wind vane, controller tower and nacelle. Let us have the understanding of all the parts. First of all, what is the rotor? The blades of the rotor bolted onto the main shaft. The rotor will turn and pass the wind's energy to the main shaft. So, it is a rotor. Now what is the main shaft? Main shaft turns the gear box. Now next one is generator. Now this is the part of a wind turbine which generates the electricity or it is more easy to, create, uh, to say that it converts the mechanical energy into the electricity and this electricity leaves the tower by the cable. So that is, that is the part of a generator. Next one is anemometer. So the anemometer is a wind measurement. Uh, generally measuring the speed of the wind, it sends this information to the controller. Next one is the wind vane. The wind vane tells us the controller uh, how to control the direction of the wind how, at uh, which direction the wind is uh, going and at which direction it is coming. It needs this information to make sure that the rotor are facing correctly into the wind. So it is very very necessary component. The controller. The controller is really the computer brain of the turbine generally. Uh, it will uh, send the information to the controller lets the wind turbine start when the anemometer tells there is not enough wind. The controller also makes sure that the rotor when it's turning is always pointed towards the wind always. Now tower. Tower is made from the tubular steel uh, on which we have to put the whole system. Now nacelle. Nacelle contains all the machinery. It means back part of the rotor if you know. All the machinery and computers that make the possible to generate electricity. Okay, so these all are the parts. Now let us discuss how the electricity is generated from the wind turbine. The wind turns the rotor of the wind turbine. Okay, blades. Most of the rotors have three blades, but some new design will uh, carry the single uh, two blades minimum. The rotor turns the generator. It means by that kinetic energy, the generator will start rotating. Okay, the generator generates the electricity. This converts the energy of the wind into the electricity. As the speed of the wind increases, the amount of wind, wind energy which is converted into electricity is also increasing. Electrical cables carry the electricity to the household or the national or local grid or to the supply system. Okay, so this is how the electricity is generated. Now, followed by the previous step, let us explain the terminology of the wind power generation. As you see, uh, there are uh, total 8 terminologies like cutting speed, efficiency of windmill, swept area, cutout speed, then rated wind speed, maximum design speed and wind velocity, wind farm. So now let us understand, in, in uh, some of uh, them you are already aware of it, so let us explain. First of all, let us explain the efficiency of windmill. Okay, so 
If we consider the efficiency of a windmill, it is uh, basically the ratio of power developed by the windmill by the wind energy available on the rotor of a windmill. It means in general we have to find out the proportionate value. How much power is generated by how much energy is available. Okay, so it is known as the efficiency one. Generally, the efficiency is in between 30 to 35. Okay, so it is windmill. Now, uh, let us consider this bacteria. As we all know, the if there is a rotor diameter, so it is calculated as pi by 4 d square. So, swept area is projected area of the windmill. It means if we are considering there is a rotor and this much is a blade, so total diameter from one point to the another point and it is converted the whole area known as swept area. Okay. Now next is cut in speed. So cut in speed is a spin of wind at which generator starts developing power. Cut in speed starts developing power. Got it? Now a certain minimum speed of the rotation is required to generate electricity because there is there are so many losses. Okay, so it is bit of a speed which is required known as cut in speed. Now cut out the speed. When the speed of the wind is very high and it is dangerous for the wind turbine, so many times it is very high and dangerous for the turbine, the generator must be isolated from its operation. So generator will not, wind will be rotate, but generator will not produce any kind of electricity. So it is known as cut out speed. It is also very, very much necessary, as necessary the cut in speed. Now, Rated wind speed. It is the speed of the wind when generator is producing rated power, required power. Now maximum design speed. So the maximum design speed of the wind at which structure of the windmill is designed as called maximum design speed. On which the structure of the mill is designed. It means up to how much it will generate the electricity at, at how much speed it will generate the electricity. Now wind velocity, it is a velocity, uh, generally it is a vector quantity, defined as the rate of displacement of air mass, okay, generally it is in uh, meters per hour or kilometer per hour you can consider. Uh, wind velocity is always given with its direction, hence it is the vector property. And the last one, wind farm, where we need to place each and every windmill, known as wind farm. Okay, to generate the electricity. So, this is all the eight components and the terminology. Now, let us understand the wind energy conversion. So, for the wind energy conversion, generally power is equal to the energy per unit time. We have to understand what the power is. Energy per unit time. Okay, energy available is the kinetic energy. Now, let us understand some terms. What is the wind velocity? It is considered as V, the unit is meter per second. What is density of air? It is considered as Q and which is kg per cubic meter. Area, known as swept area, it is capital A and the unit is meter square or square meter you can say. So now amount of air passing, it means area into velocity. This much of area and this much of velocity. It means amount of air passing, it is A into V. Okay. Now, what is M? It is the mass of air. So, we can write mass M is equal to density into amount of air passing. It means rho A V. We can write down this equation. Now, what is kinetic energy? So, kinetic energy is equal to half of M V square. Now, what is M? So, let us put the value of M in this equation. So, we will get kinetic energy as half of rho A B Q. Now, so this is the kinetic energy. Now, this kinetic energy is exactly same as the available power. In a, in a uh, equal, equal criteria if we are considering or neglect the or neglect all the losses. So kinetic energy is equal to available power that is equal to half of rho a v q and what is a it is pi by 4 d square clear now what is available power so we can write 1 by 8 
rho pi d square v cube it is available power okay now wind power is obtained from uh, this uh, expression and the unit of it is what clear now this will tell us the maximum power available for the wind it varies according to the square of the rotor of the diameter it means we can easily understand that wind power is directly proportional to the diameter square again it will also directly proportional to the velocity of a wind it means wind power is directly proportional to v q okay so it is the total power p is completely depend upon proportional of wind density second it is directly proportional to the area and third it is directly proportional to the velocity okay so this is the basic term now let us study about maximum power of a wind turbine so let us write down m bar is equal to mass flow rate now rho which is air density v1 is a incoming wind velocity as you see in our equation and our diagram v2 is the exit velocity as you see v1 and v2 v1 it means incoming rotor rotates and v2 is outgoing okay now vr the another term which is wind velocity at the surface of a rotor all velocities we are considering in meter per second you have to remember it and a is a rotor area or a disk area or a swept uh, area we can consider now air mass flow consider is uh, consider it as m bar now if we want to consider that the air flow inside is equal to air air flow outside right so we can write down m1 is equal to m2 bar what is m1 it is rho a1 v1 and what is m2 rho a2 v2 rho is a density and density will not change area a1 a2 and velocity v1 v2 so that we can write v1 a1 is equal to v2 a2 because m1 is equal to m1 bar is equal to m2 bar we can write this equation so that at the surface of a rotor what we can write m bar is equal to rho v r a okay so rated velocity is that now uh first of all we have to put the equation of v r in our uh, in our equation first of all we have to find out what is v r it is average out of maximum and minimum velocity or in velocity and out velocity so here v r is equal to half of v1 plus v2 so again if you want to find out the power we can write down p1 is equal to half of rho a1 v1 cube p2 is equal to half of rho a2 v2 cube and the power of a rotor which is a difference it means inlet power minus outlet power we will get p is equal to p1 minus p2 so here let us explain let us write down the equation of p1 and p2 so it is half of rho a1 v1 cube half of rho a2 v2 cube now let us write down the equation of uh, let us solve this equation so here we can write rho a1 v1 v1 square minus rho a2 v2 v2 square multiply by half so that we can write because rho a1 v1 is equal to m1 bar so we can write half of m1 v1 square minus half of m2 v2 square okay now here m1 bar is equal to m2 bar so we can write it is equal to m bar so here our equation of power will be as half of m bar v1 square minus v2 square but mass of air flow rate at the surface of a rotor is rho v r a so that we can write half of rho v r a into v1 square minus v2 square as power p now let us put the value of v r in our equation so finally we will get power p as 1 by 4 rho into a v1 plus v2 into v1 square minus v2 square okay so this is the power equation now for find out the maximum power and efficiency we have to consider the maximum power p max which can be obtained by differentiating power p by any of the velocity generally we have to consider the outgoing velocity which is v2 so del p by del v2 is equal to 0 now if we differentiate it what we will get we will get 3v2 square minus 2 
v1 v2 minus v1 square is equal to 0 because rho is constant mass is constant and area is also constant so here only velocity change so velocity change hence we can write this kind of equation now let us solve this equation first of all v2 is equal to v1 uh, if we solve uh, the above equation we will get two values v2 is equal to v1 and second one is v2 is equal to one third of v1 now inlet uh, uh, velocity and outward velocity there may have some different so physically equation number two is much more better it means we have to consider v2 is equal to one third of v1 okay so now let us consider v2 is equal to one third of v1 now by putting this v2 is equal to one third of v1 we will get t max is equal to 8 by 27 rho a v1 q so that we will get the maximum power now eta max is equal to p max by p total now what is p maximum it is 8 by 27 rho a v1 q what is p total it is one half rho a v1 q so finally we will get efficiency as 16 by 27 which is 0 0.59 student you have to remember this this equation will very helpful in our other theories as well as the numerical so what is the maximum efficiency it is 16 by 27 or 0 0.59 now generally actual efficiency should be in between equal to 50 to 70 percent yes? So, eta actual should be 0 0.6 into 0 0.59. So, basically 0 0.354. So, this is the actual efficiency. So, it is nearly 35 percentage. So, this is our theory of wind energy. Students, thank you all of you for watching this video. If you have any query, you can contact me.